we've got to completely, as much as possible, fix uh, some issues on the chick straw so we can get the chickens out on pasture tomorrow or Friday. It's kind of getting stressed out in the brooder and kind of pecking at each other. I need to get that, need to get that taken care of ASAP. Uh, though I want to show you something, kind of the adventure I've had so far tonight is we have this hole from uh, when we were uh, digging out and trenching and getting the uh, breeze hydrant that's way back there done. And uh, anyway, my daughters decided to play in the mud um, over here by the trenching. And they're like, let's go wash our hands off. And anyway, then they started playing in that hole. And then my youngest decided to fall in face first and went all the way in down to her butt. And so had to fish her out really fast. And so they got emergency baths tonight. It was uh, quite funny. Um, but she was just like all freaked out. She's completely okay. And uh, now they understand why we keep warning her away from that area. So that's at least good. So, but anyway, here is the chick shaw and uh, it is gonna go through some fixes. The first thing I need to do is need to see about getting this trailer jack on there and uh, get that on there because the problem is the, the chick shaw is tipping. It tips because it's it, the thing are directly in the center. The wheels are directly in the center. And if there's too much weight in the back, it kind of tips up. And uh, normally there's a kickstand that's on there, but that actually doesn't, hasn't been working out well. It's really flimsy. You have to pick up the entire thing. It's not a lot of fun to deal with. And so I just kind of decided to go a different direction. This uh, jack I think is gonna do really well because I can adjust it based on the height of the area. I can use it as a wheel and actually pull it if I'm pulling it a few feet instead of pulling it up. And I think it's just gonna work out a lot better overall. Uh, but I gotta figure out how to get it on there. And so we're gonna figure that out. got the trailer jack stand on the back of the chick shaw and I think it's going to work out really good. Let's go ahead and take a look at it here. So it works just normally. You turn it and it goes up and down. Uh, pull this lever. You can turn it sideways. And I also tried to get the uh, kind of shielding the, the plastic around it to kind of go around it. So from at least from a distance, it actually looks okay. Uh, but yeah, it goes down there. And if you'll Look, you can slightly see a little bit of uh, air and light underneath the uh, tires, so that means I actually have it raised up, so it's actually at a good height. But we, what I ended up doing is building, uh, putting two blocks here, and then on the inside doing two blocks as well, and then bolting it, up, bolting it all together. I used pocket hole screws to uh, put this top part on here, uh, so that I could attach it here and pocket hole screws so I could attach it at the bottom as well. That gave me like a plate to attach to and then I did two more two by fours. I screwed them in in the center in here so that I could do the bolts out here. That was actually a mistake that I made at first because I tried to screw them in out here in all four corners of the two by fours and then I was in the way of actually doing the bolts. And uh, yeah, so, but I mean, I got it. I, I screwed those out, did it right in the center and boom, everything went well. Did the uh, bolts on the corners and now it is done. Trimmed up the plastic and boom, I have a working uh, trailer jack on the back of my uh, chick shaw and I think it's gonna work out immensely great. I am super excited about this modification. So with the jack stand done, it's uh, actually ready to do some more work if you look. Whole thing's a lot more stable to actually be able to work on. The next thing is I need to open up the lid and I'll show you the next work that I need to get done. Okay, so I have the, I have the board off and ready. So I just gotta pull it up and oh, I think I should save this because it's probably a thousand dollars worth of wood right now. I mean, look at it, it's not too bad. Uh, it's really dirty, but I don't know if you can see it here with shadow. Look at all these screws in here. Like I had a ton of them in here. What was I doing? Why did I think I needed that many? It's like, I mean, it was ridiculous. Some of them were so covered up. I thought I like glued the thing down, but that didn't make sense. Uh, anyway, but I finally got the stupid thing off. I think that's gonna kinda 
keep it a lot more uniform in there. The downside to this is in these corners, I have the these braces here, there, and then one over there. If you look here, there's poop. If you look over there and over there and over there, like that's where poop accumulates. And so that's where poop is potentially gonna accumulate as well. Not exactly a fan of that, but I mean, it is what it is. And uh, But now I don't gotta worry about uh, all that being in there. That board over there was getting really crappy, like literally, and that was just not a good place for them. So it kind of had to go. So hopefully this is a little bit better off. The next thing that I need to do is work with the nesting box area right here. So last year, it's kind of broke uh, in kind of a bad way, and I had to fix it. And I ended up putting these supports in that are down here. I don't know if you see that. And uh, that actually helps this thing stand up a lot better. Uh, the problem is, let me get a, a nesting box, which is a milk carton. That's what they, that's what I, they pop up into. It's just one of these. And I will show you what it looks like inside. So there you go, it's in there. And uh, they'll hop up in here and then they'll do their thing. Uh, the issue is from here to here and then on up in here is several inches. And uh, the chickens are like chick, chick, and then like wiggling their way in there. And uh, it's not a good spot for them to sleep at night. And so I need to figure out something so that it doesn't disturb you know, them getting in and out, but they also can't get up into it over in the evening. And so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a two by four or something from here to over there that is just above this spot so that they can't jump into it because they can't squeeze through two inches, but they could squeeze through four inches. So. Uh, let's give that a shot and see how it goes. So here we are, got the bar in place, pocket hole screws. I did 12 inches from here. That gives just a little bit of overlap on these nesting boxes and uh, goes all the way across. So this should provide prevention from jumping over it. Let's take a look inside with the top closed. So there it is. If you'll, if you'll look, I don't know that they can actually fit through there. I mean, it looks pretty good. If you go up here to the top, there's just not a lot that they can actually jump up over. So I think that's gonna work out really good. I think it's a good modification. And uh, really the only problem that they could come across is right up there in that corner. They could kind of weasel their way up in there. Uh, hopefully they don't do that, but if it comes down to it, I can always put another brace thing and block their path. Uh, we'll see how it goes in terms of... Hey, how's it going? So here is my fence tester for my portable electric fence, and it currently doesn't work right. And uh, the actual issue is a couple of these LEDs uh, are popping out because the solder on back here is uh, kind of messed up. So let me go ahead and take this apart. I need to re-solder it back together and let me show you what's going on with it. Let me take this off here. Don't want to lose these. So this is the circuit board. Kind of look here, got some uh, Texas Instruments chip there. Some uh, transistors, resistors, monitor. Yeah, this is a printed circuit board uh, for sure. So if you look here, see this one here pops out. So it's not secure. See here this red, and it kind of pulls back out. So what we're gonna do is push that back all the way. What's happening is since this isn't completing the circuit, it's causing issues uh, through the whole thing. And uh, so we just need to resolder this back on. We should be good to go. So let's uh, get this screwed back in. Something that's interesting is uh, that I found that I found interesting is I assumed since you have this little thingy here that people since you have this little thingy here that people use to do the testing, I assumed at the end of the circuit board that uh, the sensor was going to be there. When in fact, I am 99.999% sure this is the sensor way back here. 
And when you uh, flip it over, because I think this is the this is the button. So when you flip it over and put it back in, and uh, we'll screw it together. The sensor is right there, not up here. Interesting uh, thing to note about this. So anyway, let's screw this back together. And you can push that red one in and everything starts there to go to do the whole check. So if this isn't in all the way, it's not gonna work right. So I am by no means an expert when it comes to soldering. My experience comes from trial and error and uh, watching Lewis Rossman do board repairs on occasion. So we are going to do some testing here. I'm gonna get my magnifying glass so that I can see a little bit better. You should be able to see what I am doing. So I want to first push down, make sure that LED is all the way down. And yeah. So I am heating up the first, or I'm heating these two points up. It's actually melting the, uh, what's already there. So now, since there is there, warm this one up, nice and warm, a little more. So that was your lesson in a non-expert doing a solder job. If you look at it, I mean, it's a little bubbly, it's not that great. However, when we push on the LED, it's in there secure again. So, well, it's not a great solder job. We'll call it done. Hey, so I'm taking a uh, lunch break right now and I need to get the chickens out tonight. And I'll explain that here in a minute. But I also need to test the uh, electric netting that I have because uh, it wasn't working all that well. I have another one to add to it. Since I'm going up to 40 chickens, I have uh, a lot more area that I can do and that they should be in. So anyway, I've got to test that out and actually see how it goes. I'm actually going to try to time lapse some of the work with a GoPro. So we'll see how that works out. Hopefully it'll work out well. So let's get started and set up and test this electric netting. All right, so I got the net set up goes along here and then kind of comes back a little bit. Uh, I didn't complete the circle because I have another net that I'm gonna use uh, to add on to it to make kind of a big lane. It's gonna be crazy how big it is compared to everything else. So here is my meter that I fixed last night. I lost the screw, so I'm gonna tape it, but I don't know if you can see that, lights up. Let's come around here. So what's happening is I do the thing and if you'll watch, it goes from that low to up to okay, the 2.5 kilovolts. Uh, the problem is it's not enough and I don't know if the issue is grounding out somewhere or if there's something wrong with the net itself. Uh, so I think I found a problem. I don't know if it's the problem. I don't know if you can see here, see this white strand going through the green? That's where the electric is. Well, somehow this part has gotten below this fiberglass and is grounding out on the metal on the other side here. I found that out because I was just listening to it and the sound was coming from a weird direction that it shouldn't have been coming. I don't know how that happened. All right, so I got that done. Let's turn it back on, Let's see how it goes. So it's still 2.5, but it's not grounding out on there. I don't, I need to check other areas to see if it's grounding out in the same spot. Uh, maybe that could be my issue, or I still need to scalp it, see how that goes, but that's one problem solved. So I was walking back to my office and uh, I was looking 
was comparing, looking at the area here and watching. And right here, right in this spot, I don't know, uh, I noticed some grass was touching this bottom thing there. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll clear it out. You know, it should be good. And and we'll, we'll see how that goes. And kind of got it cleared out and accidentally touched the thing right when it hit. And boom! Yeah, so now, if you look, I don't know, hopefully you can see it. Uh, yep, it's going to a four kilovolts, and I felt it. It was not a fun feeling. So I think scalping it's going to fix the rest of the issue with the uh, weed eater. So rock on. Uh, I think I'm going to be good to go tonight. Going to put the chickens in the coop tonight after dark. I saw on a video where uh, that's what they did, and supposedly it worked so that they didn't have to spend a couple of days trying to chain, train the chickens because they came out to the world in the coop for the first time they went right back in at night so i'm gonna hope that works so anyway good deal it's getting there chickens are going out on pasture tonight it's gonna be exciting so it's finally after work and uh, i'm ready to do a few things i actually did a couple of things already on here uh, one of those is i added a brace here to prevent uh this coming in here i don't know if i talked about it or not but i went ahead and did that and then I also added a brace here and one over there to stop from being able to push in. So if you, something comes up and starts banging on it, they can't get it through. I mean, even kind of going up like that, it's not really. And then there will be two more to help kind of ward it off there. So, I mean, it's getting there. This should prevent anything from coming in from behind. The one problem, this is too dang high by a couple of inches and I'm not necessarily gonna worry about adjusting it. That just means I'm gonna have to play Tetris when I pull this out. I'd pull this one out, slide it over, pull the eggs out, put it back in and slide it back in. That's just, it's a mistake that you make and I'm just gonna have to deal with it. Uh, I might be able to pull it out far enough and reach my hand in there and get them out. I don't know, we'll see, uh, but it is what it is, so we will move on. I put up the extra fence, so I now have a really big fenced-in area, and the next thing that I need to do is I need to go ahead and weed eat under there and test the electric again. So I'm gonna jump on that next. The biggest thing on the weed eating is it needs to, as I need to move the net in a little bit, take the weed eater, weed eat it out an area, and then kind of move it back out. Kind of the biggest thing is like, how much do you weed eat? Uh, so you don't do too much and then also so you don't do too little and kind of defeat the purpose. Uh, after I get done with that, I want to walk around a little bit and I'll show you a couple things about the differences between the two nets that I got. And I think this new net will be a little bit better and I'll show you why. So I have the everything weeded and set up and I just turned on the uh, actual fence and let's see see how it hits. So get my trusty SD checker. We're on the second part at the very end. Oh, I got six kilovolts. Let's try again. Nice. So I'm wondering if, so I wonder if it's slightly grounded somewhere. Let's try right here at the beginning. Uh, only four, 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 huh? Interesting. Let me try out here. Okay, right next to it. Right over it. Oh. So something could be wrong with this first net. Like, you know, I, I don't actually know what it would be, but it's hitting at four, which is weird that the other one would be hitting at six, but you know, maybe this will be enough, I hope. Uh, normally it should be hitting uh, six or eight kilovolts. Uh, 
Well, that's generally good enough. I mean, I'm looking down here at the corner. It's not touching anything. Walking along, not seeing anything really that could be disturbing it. I'll try here again. Four again. So this is where we transition to the new gate. Four, four, four. Interesting, I wonder why I was getting six back on the other side. I mean, maybe in here it's hitting a little bit. I don't know. I don't know, something's weird. Uh, it could be this corner, let's try this corner. Hit four again. Yeah, man, I don't, I don't know. I just don't know. So we're back around the front where it was doing six. Let's try again. Four, 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 four. I don't know what happened. Four. I don't know what happened. So on that note, I mean, it's probably going to be good enough uh, to get started with. I'll have to come out here and try to futz with it later and get it figured out. We'll just have to deal with it as it is. But the chickens are going in here tonight. kind of laid out here in my hair after dark just got done getting the chickens in you can hear them they're good so kind of snuck them in under the cover of night basically not really under the cover of night put them in there at night so they go to sleep tonight and then hopefully when they get up in the morning they'll just kind of come on out and uh, everything will be hunky-dory so we'll see how that theory works out and I'll show you tomorrow so it's the next day, and as you can see, the chickens are definitely out. They're walking around. It took them a couple hours to decide to actually come out of the chick shaw. But hey, they made it out, and they are liking it. As you can see, they're uh, actually kind of eating now. They're kind of running around checking out what's going on. Uh, figured out where the water was that I put on the pallet, and yeah, they're doing great. The next test is, how are they going to do getting into the coop at night? Uh, I've seen them go up and down a little bit, but I'm curious tonight when it gets dark, will all of them go back in? We'll find out.